One of the things I really love about these recent generations of gaming systems is the heavy focus on the ability to play your systems remotely on the go using your phone. And the kind of default style that's meant to be used for this is using a regular controller from the system with a phone clip and it works, but honestly, I'm not really a fan. I've talked about this before where I actually really like the options that allow you to turn your phone into something that feels like a more traditional handheld. The Kishi being one of the main examples for this, at least on iPhone. And while this has been a good option until now, there's a newer one that I started messing with. The company actually did send this out to me to try out, and I absolutely love it. This is the Backbone controller for iPhone. Now, there are a couple different things I want to cover in my review of this. One, I of course want to directly compare it to the Kishi, especially when it's being used as a form of remote play, because that is the main thing that I'm really interested in personally. But there's a lot of really interesting things going on with this controller I wanna talk about as well, as far as what it's offering for just being used as a controller on your phone in the first place. Now, as I said, this is for iPhone. You can see my own personal iPhone is currently hooked up in it, and I can already just hear all the comments immediately coming of, does it have an Android version? And the answer right now is sadly, no. It is something they are working on. There are plans to have one in the future, but as of right now, they only offer an iPhone version, which is still a very recent release. If and when they do drop the Android version of this, I do plan on picking it up as well so I can and make sure that all the features and functions are the same, or if there are any differences, to let you guys know what those are. So when that does happen sometime in the future, if you don't wanna miss that video, make sure to subscribe. First off, let's talk about what exactly is the difference between using this and the Kishi as far as my personal experience, specifically focused on remote play. And there are a couple major trade-offs that are going on here, most of which are in the Backbone's favor. To start, I will mention a couple little things about the Kishi that I do like more. One, it does have a larger grip, which I think is a little better for someone with larger hands. If you have medium or small size hands, the Backbone is still a really great choice compared to that grip-wise. Also, I do like the fact that when you want to carry it around and transport it, the Kishi can be broken down into this little smaller body that feels really nice and solid. The Backbone, at least as of right now, just allows you to carry around the controller itself like this, which does have the exposed bridge. I don't think it's frail necessarily, it's just having this kind of small section right here does make me a little worried if I carry it around a bag and maybe something happens where I fall, the bag hits just the right spot. It just is something that brings a little more worry to me as opposed to the kind of nice condensed body going on here. Aside from that though, this is pretty much better in every other single way possible. Seriously though, the sticks, the buttons, the triggers, everything feels really nice. In particular, I think one of the biggest things I really noticed a difference on is the D-pad. The D-pad on the Kishi is not great. It's able to work, it gets the job done, but ultimately not the best D-pad I've ever used. The one on the backbone is a significant improvement. Moreover, while it is smaller in size, the density of the controllers actually feel a lot nicer. It feels like just a more solid piece of plastic and in general just has a stronger feeling to the body itself. One part of this that really helps is the fact that because of the backbone's design, it's a very kind of tight feeling when you're holding it on your phone. The Kishi, a problem you can run into, especially if you have a smaller phone, is that while it does sit on the phone just fine, you get a little bit of this wiggle. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it is a slightly distracting feeling, especially if you get used to how the backbone feels in comparison. Now, the physical differences aside are one thing. I do like the way the backbone feels more in comparison, but what really does separate this is what it does on a software level. See, along with having the Backbone controller itself, there is an app that you can install as well on iOS, which does an extremely great job of making it feel like I'm not on my phone. You've got all the regular buttons here and sticks for being able to play games like you would on the system themselves, but one additional button is this Backbone button right here, which is really important for one specific reason. It acts as a shortcut that allows you to launch the Backbone app, which then acts as its own interface for listing all the different games that you own that support the controller, listing additional titles you might be interested in checking out that'll work for it as well, and it gives you this easy way of being able to quickly swap between multiple games without ever having to interact with your phone 
like it's your phone. I don't have to swipe up on the screen. I don't have to navigate my menu. I instead just hit this button, go back to the Backbone app, launch a different game I wanna play, and keep going. It's very easy for me during an extended period of time using this to honestly forget that I'm even on my phone in the first place. I'll be playing an iOS title and then immediately switch over to using PlayStation Roleplay and not once during that whole time actually have to use traditional phone controls, which I really, really like. Now again, while I do like using this as a controller for iOS games, the main focus really here for me is using it for remote play. So let's just go ahead and kind of cover some of the best practices for remote play again really quick. This is something I've talked about before, but it is really important. Now for both PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, you want to make sure you are plugged directly into the internet. It doesn't matter how good your home Wi-Fi is, you want to make sure you have the absolute best stable connection possible so that if you are playing either remotely within the same Wi-Fi network or if you're actually out and you're connected to the internet elsewhere, you want to make sure that internet connection is as strong as possible to give you a smooth experience. A lot of this does depend on how good of internet you have at home and how strong of a Wi-Fi signal you're connecting to with your phone, but provided it meets those kind of nice minimums, you're able to have a very stable connection to your system and play it honestly very much like you were doing it at home but on the go. Yes, there's gonna be times where you maybe have a little unstable connection and it drops. I'm not necessarily recommending you play very hardcore competitive games if you care about your ranking, but playing single player games or just casually playing something on the go with no noticeable latency, which is awesome. Now there is one mistake I actually made in a previous video talking about this whole subject, which was the fact that for PlayStation Remote Play specifically, you cannot use any controllers outside of the DualShock 4, which is true for Android. However, on iOS, you're actually able to make use of other officially supported controllers like the iOS version of the Kishi. It will work for this as well. And in this case, the Backbone will also allow you to play remote play without having to rely on on-screen controls or use a DualShock 4 or DualSense once that support is added. Now again, one of the options for doing this is to just use a phone with a clip, which does have the benefit of just letting you use a regular controller as long as you're willing to carry one around. But honestly, that's just never felt right to me, especially after all these I've spent playing on handhelds like the Game Boy, PlayStation Portable, PS Vita, of course the Switch going on right now. I like the feeling of something that feels like a proper dedicated handheld with controllers on each side. And this emulates that experience so much better. And with the added software level support that the Backbone has going on, it really does feel like I'm playing on a a focused handheld rather than something where it's just launching an app on my phone. And in many ways, aside from the additional issues that can pop up from you having a weaker connection, this is about as close as it gets, I think right now, to having a PlayStation or Xbox version of the Switch where you can play on your TV at home. And as soon as you wanna play on the go, at least provided you have a decent Wi-Fi connection, you're able to do handheld mode as well. And this delivers on that front. Now, aside from how it works for remote play, there are a couple other things that I do wanna point out about what this controller offers because it honestly is really cool. First off, on a physical level, it does have a lightning pass through, so you can charge your phone at the same time you're using this. That is a feature offered by the Kishi as well. But on top of that, there's also an additional auxiliary port. So if you want to use a wired headset, you can do that again with your phone, assuming it's currently missing a headphone jack like a lot of the new ones are. Going back to the software, the backbone though, there is a couple other things I think are worth pointing out that again, really highlight the fact that this is able to very much convert your experience of playing games on your phone to feel more like a traditional handheld and not necessarily like you're just launching an app on your phone. In particular, there is a community aspect of it where if you have friends that also own a backbone, you can be friends with them. You'll get push notifications whenever someone hops into a game that you wanna join in on, like say, Call of Duty Mobile. There's also recording features on here that are really, really nifty. In fact, you actually have a dedicated record button right here. You can tap that to start recording, whether you're doing something that is on an actual native iOS game, or if you are playing something on remote play, you can also, of course, just make use of your own systems, record functions if you're remotely controlling it. But on the iOS level of things, you can record what's happening on your phone and then even edit those clips inside of the Backbone app. You have a couple different recording options as far as quality of things go. You can do it in HEVC or H.264. You can adjust the bit rate, what resolution you record, at. And what's really interesting is that the actual editing software inside the Backbone app gives you a little kind of graph showing where lots of activity are happening on the screen and in sound. So you can kind of see where most likely a lot of high action moments are happening and trim out a lot of sections that might be more boring because nothing's happening other than you walking around. On a controller level alone, this is a great option for just having something that feels comfortable and lets you play your remote play games or iOS games with controller support 
on the go. However, it's the software that really does push this whole experience to a whole nother level. And I know I've said this time and time again in this video, but I really think it is the biggest important takeaway. It just doesn't feel like I'm doing something on my phone. The app really does elevate it to this level where combined with the shortcuts afforded by the controller itself, it really does feel like you're playing on some kind of new dedicated handheld that just happens to have all the things you would play on your phone. As it stands right now with controller options out there on iOS, this is my new go-to for doing remote play or even just playing games in general on my phone. Sure, there is that temptation of using my DualShock 4 or my Xbox Series X controller if I really wanna have the gameplay be the exact same as it is at home, but in terms of the portability, the way that it feels like a proper handheld rather than this whole kind of rigged up setup with a arm on a controller, this just feels so much more natural to me and is definitely, I think, the best execution of this concept so far.